Okay, welcome to another video. In this video, we're going to be looking at clines. We're going to do a simple tutorial on a simple uh, to-do app using Cline. Cline is previously the Cloud Dev uh, extension for VS Code. Um, here I am at MarketplaceVisualStudio.com, and we can look at the uh, Cline documentation here, or at least the extension part of it. We can also go to the uh, actual repo for Klein. So uh, you can see this right here. And I will have this in the uh, description, of course. Uh, but we can see everything about uh, what the developers are providing for us and as far as documentation on Klein here. Uh, so let's just go ahead and get started. And we will go ahead and start by um, we're going to go ahead and create a folder, and we'll just call this to do. And we're going to go ahead and open this up in VS Code. Okay. Now, once we're in VS Code, uh, we're going to go ahead and install the app. So you would go into your extensions, and you would just type in Klein. And then once you have it uh, showing here, you'll need to install it. Just go ahead and click Install, and then it will be installed. Of course, I already have it installed here, so I don't need to do that. Once you have it installed, you'll see the little robot head here, and we will click on Klein. And of course, you can see the history of what you've been doing here, but what we're going to do is look at settings. And what you'll need to do is choose uh, which which um, model you want to use and which uh, service you want to use. I have uh, de default to Anthropic, and we are using Claude uh, 3.5 Sonnet. And um, this works great because it supports images. It does uh, prompt caching. It is, it's definitely the best that I have found so far with working with Klein. The only problem is history. So once you start um, using Klein, you'll, you'll notice that... Um, after uh, not very long, but a lot of uh, uh, sort of uh, prompts that you add and you're going back and forth and having it uh, build up the uh, application that you're working on, it can get to the point where it starts maxing out your, uh, your limits. So you'll have a, a limit per minute. So it's a good idea to sort of try to manage that, maybe go into different um, uh, new, creating a new task or a new task uh, in this here. So when you get, you know, certain tasks done that is created, just go ahead and create a new task to sort of manage your memory. Um, we'll just go ahead and start with a prompt by saying, uh, please, please create a simple to do app using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. All right, let's just use that as the prompt and see what it gives us. Certainly, I'll help. I'll create the uh, simple to do app using HTML, CSS, JavaScript. Let's break this down into tasks. And it's a good idea to really read what it's saying here because you can easily miss something assuming that it's done something or assuming that it's going to do something. So it's saying first we'll need to create a basic structure for our, our app with HTML, then we'll style it with CSS, and finally we'll add the functionality with JavaScript. So let's start by creating an HTML file. Klein wants to create a file and we want it to create the file, so we'll go ahead and save. All right, so next it says, now that we've created the HTML file, let's create the CSS. Sounds like a good idea. And we can go over here and, of course, look at what it's generating here. And we'll do that after it's completed its tasks here. So now we have the HTML and the CSS. Let's create the JavaScript. So it sounds good. Let's save it. So now it's given us a, a review of what it's done. It's saying I've successfully created the to-do app using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Let's review what we've done. Created the index.html, which is the basic structure of the app, the CSS, which will style our app and make it visually ap appealing. Created the script.js to add functionality to our app. All three of these files have been successfully created and now present are, and are now present in the current directory. Uh, let's verify the contents of each file to ensure everything is correct. Klein, read this file. So it's going to read that file. 
and um, the content of the file looks correct. Now let's read the CSS. So it's so not only has it went and created this, it's gone through and it's checking everything that it's done to make sure everything is done correctly, right? So it's done the CSS, the JavaScript, and then it sums this up by saying the content of the script is cor uh, of the script.js is correct as well. Uh, now that we've verified all the files, uh, we can confirm that our simple to do app has been successfully created. And here's a summary of what the app does. So this is what we're going to look at. The HTML file, uh, index.html, provides a structure of the app, including the input field, which is, of course, what we need, um, a new task, add task button, and an empty list for tasks. The CSS styles the app to make it visually appealing and responsive. This, the JavaScript, script.js, adds functionality to the app. It allows users to add, a, add tasks by clicking the add task button or pressing enter, um, that's always good to have. And uh, the new tasks are added to the list with a delete button, which is good to have as well. Uh, users can remove tasks by clicking, clicking the delete button next to each task. Let's use the attempt completion tool to present the result to the user and provide a way for the, a, a view the app. Uh, the showcase result, we can use the open command uh, to open the index.html file and in the defeat default web browser. This will allow the user to interact with the to-do app directly. Task completed. So it's done everything. It says I have completed the, the uh, simple to-do ta task in the HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and the app allows users to add tasks. It's kind of redundant here, but it's, it's, it's good that it's doing all this. Um, display them in a list, delete the task, and the app consists of these three files. Uh, you can now open and interact with the to-do app in your default browser. So we can run this command, and it'll go ahead and open this up for us. And there you go. So, I mean, that is amazing. Let's uh, go ahead and put in our first task. So uh, first task. And we pressed enter, and it shows here. And this is looks looks good. I mean, we've got um, it working here. So we, we can go ahead and click this and see what happens. Nothing's happening here. Does the delete button work? The delete button does work, but when you add a task, so we add a task here, it's not it's not checking it off. So let's go back to our code here and let's let Klein know. So the um, we'll say there is no check box to complete a task. Let's just see what it does with that. So I understand, let's add the, the checkbox to mark it as complete. We need to modify our HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Now it's going to update these. And let's start by updating the HTML uh, API request. The HTML structure is fine as it is. We'll modify the JavaScript to add the checkbox dynamically. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, we're saving the style, and we're saving the JavaScript. and HTML looks good, um, so it's reviewing everything it did. Okay, so I've uh, updated the simple to do app, for task complete, updated CSS. Now uh, to complete task and checkbox, modify the JavaScript. Um, so added the checkbox, implement toggle complete, and update the task. So let's go ahead and run this command. And we'll just close the old. And let's just add a uh, task one, task two, and let's just check this out. So, yep, it's crossing it, it's completing it. And I would like it so that when you click on the text, it uh, checks it complete as well. And also, I don't like it. This, this is a lot of spacing. Let's go ahead and change that. So... So please change the spacing between the checkbox and the text. Also, 
have it so that when you click the text, it, it also completes the task. Okay. Okay, understand the feedback. Let's make th the following changes. Adjust the spacing between the chat box, and we'll go ahead and um, allow the click, clicking the text to complete the task. So let's start by updating the CSS. We could, of course, be going through here and checking this ourselves, but I want to let the, uh, the client itself do this. So we'll go ahead and save. All right, so now this looks good. It's uh, task complete, and it's increased the space. Increase the space, interesting. Okay, uh, between the checks box, so it's given a margin of 15 picks, uh, added a cursor pointer style, and allow the cl allow clicking the text. Okay, let's test this out and see if it's doing this. We'll go ahead and click open, and let's close this old one. Test one. Okay, yeah, that looks better. Definitely looks better. And that is being set as completed. We'll go with uh, test two. And uh, we'll complete that. No, nope, let's delete that. Okay, this is all working well. Okay. So the next thing I want to do is go ahead and have it store in local storage. So, so let's say, please change the code to be able to save in local storage. Okay. All right, so certainly I'll modify the JavaScript code to implement this. So. It's going through and making a lot of changes here. So let's kind of just go through here and see what it's doing. So uh, on on change, okay, so it's gonna, that's the toggle complete. And let's see if we can find where it's gonna change, save this to the local storage. And let's see. Safe task to local storage. So yes, this is where we're adding that code here. So that looks good. Let's go ahead and save it. All right, so it's added, it's created a few functions here and uh, it's implementing them. The get task, save task, add task, remove task, toggle complete. Let's see how this looks now. So go ahead and let's go ahead and Doing command op, option command I to open up the developer tools over here on Chrome, and then I click on application. I go under local storage, and I'm clicking this file. Actually, it might be stored here. We'll see what it does here. So let's go ahead and say task. Or, yeah, task one. All right. So yeah, it was under local storage. There we go. And it's saying task one completed is false. We don't have it completed. If we check completed, it changes completed as true. Let's uh, add another task. Task two, and then we'll just, we see that it's here. Let's just go ahead and delete that, and it deletes it. Okay, so our to-do app is working as we would expect it to. Uh, it is awesome. And uh, that's it for this tutorial. And um, hope you enjoyed. And until the next video, take it easy.